Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I have a very short video for you. It highlights the kind of information that I'm working on now on my site at adamblockstudios.com. I believe that it's possible to develop a special kind of workflow. It's a workflow that will help people solve problems. One of the things that I get are all kinds of questions, you know, why is WBPP doing this? Why does my image look like this? I can't figure out X, Y, and Z. And I claim that there is a recipe, there's a certain workflow or number of steps that you can take that will solve or at least indicate what the problem is in under two minutes. So on my site, I'm going to be putting together that kind of material. This particular problem that I'm about to solve is an ex a perfect example of the kind of way that you can think about solving things and just quickly figure it out without any frustration, without taking a whole lot of time to do it. So look for this particular example. It, if you have this problem, it'll solve it. But also I'm going to try to make it a more general kind of solution. People don't like to see other people's problems. They want to solve their own. But if you can generalize a nice recipe for figuring it out, well, then you're going to make a lot of people happy. So enjoy this quick look at a particular issue that you might have, but think about the more general way you can approach these kinds of problems. One of the members of my site presented me with a problem. He was using his one-shot color camera to collect data that was taken across many nights. But when he used WBPP, he found that one of the nights would not align with the others. All of the files taken on one night, there was just some reason why they would not align. Now, he looked at the images, he said. He looked at the log file, and he couldn't figure out what was going on. So I'm trying to develop a workflow that you would go step by step, diagnostically, looking at all of these things to determine where the problem is. Uh, in this particular case, given this workflow, um, I can skip ahead because I kind of know where to begin. He said that this is a registration problem. So you, the viewer, can pause the video for a moment and just consider what do I need to ask him for? What files do I need to request? So hopefully you've given that some thought. And the answer is that I need to request the debayered files. Those are the files that are generated right before um, WBPP goes and tries to do star alignment. WBPP is a sequential pipeline. It does things in a very particular order. And the last set of files that are generated before they are ingested by star alignment are the debayered files. So I asked him for debayered files. I don't need many. I just need the ones that don't align. And I need one other thing. I need the reference frame because that's the problem, right? I, the reference frame is being used to align to these others. And if they don't match or they can't figure it out, uh, I need that file as well. When you run WBPP, there isn't an obvious indication of which file was chosen that is done internally. You can look at the log file and figure it out. You can also use the process container that is generated by WBPP upon its execution. I have a video in my WBPP explanations which shows how to take advantage of that process container and figure out what was the reference file for registration purposes that was used. He did that. And that's what we're looking at on the screen here. This is the reference frame. Now, the other frames that he provided, let me just go ahead and show you what they look like. Here's one of them. And, uh, you know, when I opened it up, I was a little surprised because he didn't give me a debayered file. And this is actually a learning point, right? Something that you would need to learn. He gave me one of the calibrated files, which is the step prior to what we need. Now, it's trivial just to debayer the data, so I will do that in just a moment. The other thing I can tell by looking at the files here is that if I look at the uh, reference frame that he gave me, which is a debayered file, it has to be, because it was used in the course of uh, star alignment, I can even see it, well, it has an underscore D, which means debayered, underscore R, which means registered, and an underscore one. That means he must have run WBPP at least more than one time. So he's been working on this problem. Now, let me go ahead and use the, the debayer process and do the debayering so I can get data that, will, uh, that I can now try to align myself. I already have them loaded here. 
these are the files that he gave me. So I'm going to, uh, and I'll make sure it's going to go to the correct directory. Yes. So I'll go ahead and run this. Okay, it's debayered them, which means that if we now open them, we'll be able to see that those are color images. So the second step is to go ahead and do star alignment. What I need to do is indicate the reference frame, change this to file, go select the reference frame that he gave me. And then, of course, we're going to add the files that are now these registered versions of the data. These should have an underscore, let's be sure, oh, not registered, a debayered, sorry, underscore D there. We are going to register them. And the output directory, I'm just going to put it right in the same place. Let's go ahead and execute and see if it uh, aligns the images for us. So just as he had found, the images did not align. It says it's unable to find a valid set of star matches. So the question becomes, again, why? Well, there's another concept here. We're concerned about the alignment of stars. PixInsight uses stars to align images. I know this sounds very obvious, but if you look at the image in this form, it's not clear that we can tell what's going on because we're too zoomed out. We need to look at the stars. That's the key. And this is actually something that the member missed. This is the kind of information that one of these uh, workflows of evaluating information is going to provide. It'll tell you, you need to zoom in to images to better understand what the problem is. Another thing we can do is we can open up one of the images just by double clicking here in the field of the uh, star alignment uh, list of files. And we can look at it. This is indeed a debayered image. Is there a difference between this image and the reference frame? Well, number one, we can see that it is flipped, um, or rotated, I should say, by 180 degrees. That shouldn't cause a problem. That's okay. Um, but let's zoom in and look at the stars. Ah, look at that. Within two seconds, I've already found an issue. The data is not in focus. Certainly it's not in one of the frames that we're trying to align. Now we should go look at the reference frame. How does it compare? Well, we can align the two frames by dragging the tab of one to the other and comparing the two. It won't be obvious that because they're rotated by 180 degrees, we're not gonna see the same frame, but we can see the stars. And in each of these images, the stars are out of focus. Now, if they're both out of focus by the same degree, maybe PixInsight would say, okay, uh, you know, maybe it can still align them. But that's hard, actually. They're probably not out of focus by the same amount. The very fact that the stars are out of focus is a big red flag. Um, again, star alignment relies on stars. And what a star is, it is a point spread function that has a very particular geometry out-of-focus stars do not have that geometry. Therefore, PixInsight will not see them as stars in general. Now, in this case, it actually will see some stars, and I should just demonstrate this is another diagnostic tool. You can always run. Um, one of the working modes of star alignment is to look at just the detected stars. So you keep the same settings that we have here, and then I put my uh, I can drag the triangle over to one of the images, and it basically analyzes the image. It's going to return an image that will show us what has been detected. So I will uh, invert the color scheme here and zoom in a little bit, and you can see these little pluses indicate stars that are detected. Now, if I actually compare this to the image that we ran it on, we'd actually see which things are truly detected objects. Well, so it's detecting this is a star, and this is a star, and this is a star. Doesn't see this is a star. Not at all. In fact, I'm not going to do it here, but if you run that same operation on the registration frame, it also detects stars, but not the same ones, because the out-of-focus nature of the two images being different has a different set of stars, quote-unquote, being detected, so the alignment simply doesn't work. That's the answer to the question as to why on this night, compared to the other nights, it was not able to register the images. They are sufficiently different in their focus that it actually detects different stars, and of course the patterns are going to be different, um, and it just won't align. So what can we do? Well, one thing you could do is, in a way, fix the problem. This has not always been true, but it is true today. 
Today we have tools like Blur Exterminator. It's a very nice tool. And one of the things that Blur Exterminator does is it can correct for aberrations that even include the out of focus nature of an image of stars. So what I'm going to do is use an image container to load the images that we want to operate on and then basically in like a batch mode just use Blur Exterminator. So the image files are located here. I will select them. And then I am going to change the output directory to the place that they need to go. Which can be here as well, but I'll put them in there in a new place. We'll call this BXT corrected. Like that. Then we just need to get out Blur Exterminator. Now, if you don't have Blur Exterminator, you're going to be stuck. Uh, in the sense that it's hard to try to force um, PixInsight to recognize stars that are out of focus, especially when you have two out of focus images, that is a bridge too far. So what I'm going to do here with Blur Exterminator is to use the correct only option. Now, there is always this uh, you know, trick as to which direction do you go here. Do we drag this triangle here? No, you can see that there's an X, but we can go the other way where we drag this triangle over here and then it's going to operate on each of those images that I've loaded into the image container. So we're going to obviously give this a minute. It takes a moment for Blur Exterminator to do its job. Okay, so it's successfully completed the job, which means I should now be able to load. Notice I didn't even apply it to, uh, uh, to the reference frame. I only corrected the, um, the data frames themselves. So let's turn the, put this back into the, uh, the normal mode here. And then clear these. Let's add the corrected files. Control A. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to even look. Well, let's look at one. It's fun to look at one because let's look at the same one here. This is 009. Uh, only because you can see what wonderful things correction does. Correction is not doing a a full kind of deconvolution. It's taking care of any aberrations, which does include focus. So if we zoom in now, these are now the resulting stars. This is what we had a moment ago. If we align these two, blink the images, you can see out of focus to in focus. That is quite the correction. Um, and I think it will be beneficial for the reason that uh, Having in focus stars, we're also going to find that alignment should take place this time. As you can see, now in the console, you can see that uh, frames are actually being aligned with respect to the reference frame. And finally, we can see the result is that we now have 11 files that have been registered. This completely solves the issue. What this gentleman would need to do and to, you know, if you wanted to actually use this data instead of take new data that was in focus, right, you could, I guess, salvage the out of focus data. It wouldn't be perfect, but uh, the correction done with BXT, done in the manner that I showed with an image container across all of that data, or at least across the data on the night where that was out of focus, would allow that data to be used. Hey, I hope you enjoyed watching this quick section on how to solve problems like this. Again, look for more of this at AdamBlockStudios.com, where I am going to have basically a recipe, a workflow that you can go through step by step. If you just don't, you simply don't know where to go or what to think about, I'll provide that list of steps and it'll probably solve your problems 90% of the time. Until then, clear skies.